trends in the periodic table. The periodic table does not need to be learnt off, however it does need to be understood. Before we start the lesson, it is important you have a good understanding of the periodic table. The periodic table essentially consists of periods and groups. Periods go horizontal whereas groups are vertical. Each element within a group contains similar properties. This is because they each contain the same number of electrons in their outer orbit. For instance, all elements in group 1 contain one electron in its outer orbit and all elements in group 2 contain two electrons in their outer orbit. The only difference between elements within groups is the number of orbits. Each period represents an orbit. For instance, hydrogen and helium contain one orbit. Lithium to neon have two orbits. The number of orbits increases by one as you go down a group. This either enhances or diminishes some of the properties of elements within the groups. You will learn about this later in the lesson. Each group does have a name attached to it, so you need to know some of them. Group 1 are the alkali metals, group 2 the alkaline earth metals, group 7 the halogens, and group 8 are the noble gases. Anything to the left of the ladder is a metal, and any element to the right of the ladder is a non-metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. It is sometimes placed in group 1, as it only contains one electron. Different periodic tables will place hydrogen in different sides of the ladder. There are four trends that you need to be aware of. Within each trend, you need to be able to define, state the trend plus explanation, and be able to give an example. The atomic radius is defined as half the distance between the nuclei of two atoms of the same element joined together by a single covalent bond. The more orbits or energy levels, as they're also called, the bigger the atom. Therefore, as you go down the group, the atomic radius is getting bigger. Opposites attract, and there is an attraction between electrons and protons. The greater the number of protons, aka the nuclear charge, the greater the strength of the attractive force. The protons are essentially pulling the electrons closer to the nucleus, making the atomic radius smaller because of this pull. This means that as you go across a period that's left to right, the atomic radius is getting smaller due to the increasing nuclear charge. Another reason why atoms get bigger going down a group is because of something called the screening effect. The screening effect is essentially the innermost electrons shielding the nuclear charge from the outermost electrons, meaning the outermost electrons are relatively unaffected by the nuclear charge. This explains why even though there is an increase in nuclear charge going down a group, the atomic radius increases going down the group. There is no increase in the screening effect going across a period. The screening effect only really applies for elements in group 1 and 2. The Bohr model visually shows how the atomic radius increases going down a group. You have to be able to learn this off. The first ionisation energy is defined as the minimum energy required to completely remove the most loosely bound electron from a neutral gaseous atom in its ground state. The further the outermost electron is from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove it. This is because the attractive force is not as strong. We can conclude that as the atomic radius increases, the easier it is to remove an electron from the outer orbit. The easier it is to remove, the less energy needed. Ionization energy decreases going down a group. The screening effect is another reason why ionization energy decreases down a group, as the innermost electrons are shielding the attractive pull of the nuclear charge from the outermost electrons. Ionization energy increases going across the period because of the increasing nuclear charge. The increase in the charge causes the pull of electrons to become closer to the nucleus and stronger meaning more energy is required to remove the outermost electron. The more energy required, the increase in ionisation energy. The increase in nuclear charge going across the period, coupled with the no screening effect, means the atomic radius decreases. The closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the more difficult they are to remove. This means the decreasing atomic radius is the second reason why ionisation energy increases across the period.
There are some exceptions to the trend of ionisation across the periodic table. Remember before we talked about full or half-filled sublevels having increased stability than expected? Well, this increased stability has an impact on the trend in ionisation energies going across a period. Page 80 of your log tables contains the first ionisation energies of all the elements in the periodic table. Scientists noticed when calculating the ionisation energies that some elements were bucking the trend. For instance, the elements beryllium, nitrogen, magnesium or phosphorus had increased amount of ionisation energy than expected. Beryllium and magnesium have a full sublevel, whereas nitrogen and phosphorus have half-filled sublevels. This leads to them having increased stability and causes their ionisation energy values to increase. The second ionisation energy is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from an ion with one positive charge in its gaseous state. The second ionisation energy is always greater than the first, as there are now being more protons than electrons. This means that the electrons are now held more firmly by the positive ion. The atomic radius of an ion is smaller than the neutral atom, therefore there is an increase in ionisation energy for the removal of the second electron. The electronegativity trend follows the same trend as the first ionisation, and for the same reasons. Going down a group, the atomic radius is getting bigger due to an increasing number of orbits. This means the electrons are getting further and further away from the attractive force of the nucleus. This means there is a small attractive force between the nucleus and the shared pair of electrons, so therefore electronegativity decreases. The screening effect is another reason electronegativity decreases down a group. Once again, the nuclear charge is increasing, but it has been cancelled out by the screening effect. The screening effect is the outermost electrons being shielded from the attractive force of the positively charged nucleus by the innermost electrons. Electronegativity values increase going across the period because of the increasing nuclear charge and decreasing atomic radius. The reasoning is the same as before. Note, fluorine is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. It is more electronegative than neon because neon is inert, unreactive, so it does not attract electron pairs and also does not form bonds very well. If you look at the table for electronegativity on page 81 of your log tables, you will see the noble gases are not included due to the elements having no tendency to form bonds. are all very reactive because they have very low first ionisation values. They only need to lose one electron to become stable. Alkali metals do not exist freely in nature because of this reactivity. Any alkali metals in the lab are stored under oil. Reactivity increases going down a group as the atomic radius is getting larger and also you have the screening effect. This causes the first ionisation energy values to decrease. There are two reactions in particular that you need to know. The first is that all alkali metals react with oxygen to form an oxide. Example, sodium plus oxygen gives you sodium oxide and potassium plus oxygen gives you potassium oxide. It is because of this reaction that alkali metals are stored under oil. The second reaction involves an alkali metal and water. This reaction produces hydrogen gas and hydroxide. For example, sodium plus water gives you sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. The gas is given off and hydroxide remains the solution. We often use an arrow pointing upward to represent a gas being given off. The reaction becomes more dangerous going down a group. In the case of potassium, the heat produced causes the hydrogen to catch fire. The further down you go, the more explosive the reaction. The halogens are all very reactive elements due to them being one electron away from a full outer orbit. Because they are so reactive, none of them exist freely in nature. They exist as compounds. Fluorine is the most reactive element because it has such a high electronegativity value. Reactivity decreases going down the group as electronegativity values also decrease. As you go down the group, the states of matter change. Fluorine and chlorine 
a gas is at room temperature. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature, whereas iodine and acetine are both solids at room temperature. The reason for this change of state is due to the atomic radius increasing going down a group. The bigger atomic radius means the electron clouds are also bigger, so it is easier for temporary bonds to form. The easier it is to form bonds, the stronger the bonds are. Thus, the van der Waals forces between molecules increase. The halogens are all very reactive elements, due to them being one electron away from a full outer orbit. Because they are so reactive, none of them exist freely in nature. They exist as compounds. Fluorine is the most reactive element because of its high electronegativity value. Reactivity decreases going down the group, as electronegativity values also decrease. As you go down the group, the states of matter change. Fluorine and chlorine molecules are gases at room temperature. Bromine molecules are liquids, whereas iodine molecules are solid at room temperature. The reason for this change of state is due to the atomic radius increasing going down the group. Bigger atomic radius means the electron clouds are getting bigger, so it is easier for temporary bonds to form. The easier it is to form bonds, the stronger the bonds become. Therefore, the van der Waals forces between molecules increase.